Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. In this video, we're going to take a look at NVIDIA Rapids. This is a system that NVIDIA has put together that allows you to do deep learning, XGBoost, all sorts of things completely in the GPU, even data pre-processing. So we'll look at how you can do this through a Python interface. We're going to be doing this on a Lenovo P53 because this does require Linux. And this is a computer that has Linux installed as its primary operating system. So we're going to take a look and see how you can make use of this amazing technology. Okay, so we're going to, we're in Ubuntu here. Let me go ahead and open up Chromium. I have instructions for the process of installing Rapids on my GitHub repository. We're going to go right there real quick. This is under my presentations, which is where all my YouTube videos go. YouTube, and this is under NVIDIA and Rapids. Now this is looking at it in GitHub. We're going to actually run it when it comes time to do that on the Lenovo ThinkPad. This is a link to Rapids, uh, and the instructions I have here, basically, these version numbers may change if you're watching this considerably into the future. So have a look here and see if Rapids is using a later version of Python, say, than 3.7. 3.9 was just released a few days ago as of the recording of this video. So for the first thing I'm going to do is create a Conda environment for it. This assumes that you've already installed Miniconda or Anaconda. It doesn't matter what version you have in your outer environment. We're creating an environment here that will have 3.7, which as of the recording of this video, is the recommended Python version for Rapids and Desk. So I'm opening up my terminal here, and I'm going to go ahead and create my new environment for it. This may take a moment, and we say yes, so I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this. All right, it is done, so it's already suggesting we run Conda Activate Rapids API, AI, I mean, and that's what I have here as the next command anyway. So let's go ahead and copy this, and we'll go back to our terminal window and run it. And you'll see that now we're in the Rapids API. Rapids AI. I keep wanting to say API. So we're going to copy this portion here. This is going to actually install it from Conda Forge. Press enter. And it's now installing this into our Rapids AI environment that we set up. This has a lot of pieces to install. It's even installing the low level CUDA drivers so that we can run these jobs on the GPU, which is the primary point of this operation. So I'm going to fast forward through this. This definitely takes a while. And we will proceed, yes. And I'll fast forward through this part as well. Okay, that has completed. So now we can do the next step. We are going to connect this so that Jupyter can make use of it. I'm going to install this into the new environment that we created paste that in and run it. I'll fast forward through this process. We will proceed and continue to fast forward. Okay, now that that is done, this command here is actually very quick. This just registers the kernel into Jupyter. All right, that should be good to go. So now I can go ahead and launch the Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter Notebook, this starts it up, and I'm going to open that same Rapids file that we had there. This is the same notebook. You would just download it from GitHub. I'm going to go ahead and run it. It should produce the same output, although before I run it, let me make sure we have the right kernel. You want to change kernel and go to Rapids AI. And if I run it, what it's basically going to do, this is the sample code that I got from the Rapids download page. And I just changed the URL. I made it so that it runs my Iris data set that I have on my class website. And I put in the four measurements so that it doesn't throw an error trying to calculate the mean of the class that we're trying to classify. So I'll run that. You see the star, it's running. This shows you really how similar QDF, QDF is CUDA data frame, 
from Rapids, how easy it is and how similar it is to Pandas. The trick here now is we have loaded the Iris data set into the GPU memory, so it's there, so that saves us having to round trip it. That was our Hello World, and it lets us know that we have Rapids successfully installed. Now let's do something a little more complicated. We are going to run XGBoost entirely on the GPU. So I want to get this command going here first because this is going to take some time. We're going to download the Higgs dataset, which is gzipped. It's a fairly large data set. We'll see exactly how, how big in a moment. It's not exactly a gigantic data set, but it's, it's something to at least give the GPU something to work on that will challenge it. Let me open up another terminal window because I want to leave the first terminal window running. I'll paste in the command that I have here, wget, and we'll run that. And it's now downloading. So this, this is going to take a little while. So I am going to fast forward through this. You can see it's, it's now at 1%. It's already 30 megabytes downloaded. My internet connection is not going the fastest right now. And it estimates that this is going to take around 27 minutes to download. Once this is downloaded too, you're going to need to unzip it. We'll go ahead and fast forward through this whole download process. And there it is. Now, this is a GZ file. It's 2.62 gigabytes just for the zip file. So let's unzip it. All right, it's unzipped. Let's have a quick look at the file. So here it is, Higgs, 8 gigabytes. Now, this file is data for the Higgs boson, the God particle. It's a classification. You're classifying between signal and noise. So it is a it is a binary classification. Let's go ahead and use this now in XGBoost. Now the code that I have here is from or based on the code provided by Nvidia provided by Rapids on their medium site. So let me go ahead and reference the original source because I like some of the diagrams that they have in here. What they're demonstrating and what that, the code that I'm showing you I've set up to demonstrate is they're going to partition this big file. The whole thing is a Dask data frame, but then Rapids puts it into those Ku data frames and it's able to be passed to multiple GPUs and or a single GPU like we're going to do. This laptop has a single GPU on it and it can process on those partitions. So you often wonder if having a second GPU will really help you. In this case, yes, definitely, because the GPU, each GPU is becoming essentially a worker in this cluster. Now let's look back at the code that I've set up here to run. You can see there's a main function. The main function is helpful because we're going to pass in a client that is down here. It's the local cluster. I'm passing in number of workers as one. If you have two GPUs, put two in there, or you can leave it off and it'll detect how many GPUs you have. The with command in Python causes these resources to be closed after they're done. Now, if you get strange GPU errors like, like I often do, I mean, that just comes with the territory of using GPUs, restart your Linux environment or restart the GPU card, usually it's often because you've left something open or something is still referencing it. So when it runs this inner main function, it's going to open the Higgs CSV. It is going to create the column name. So we're going to have the label, which is the first one. And then all of these features, the 29 features that the data set has, and we're going to put it into a Dask data frame format. Now this is one of the real powers of Rapids is that you can get the data into the GPU and leave it there. Normally round tripping the data in or out of the GPU is what's really slowing you down. And that's why having multiple GPUs on a computer or even on a, an array of computers will really help you because their individual worker units 
really at that point. And you don't, if you have a complex ETL pipeline going here, I know with XGBoost and other packages that I've worked for, each has its own way that it wants that data represented. Rapids lets you have that end to end so that it goes into the GPU, stays in one format, gets transformed perhaps by whatever ETL or model pipeline part you have. The tree method that you have here, this is using the GPU. You can see that it's there. And we are going to get the training history out of it. You can see it already down there, but let's go ahead and run it again and run this. I won't really even need to fast forward for this. It is, it's now going in. It, this takes under 20 seconds, as I recall. I can hear the fan on my computer spinning up on the laptop. That is a result of the GPU in this computer. The ThinkPad that I got from Lenovo has a pretty powerful GPU in it. It's not one of the new Ampere ones, but those are not even available yet. It is a Quadro RTX 5000, which is a pretty fast one. But it is a single GPU environment. You can ignore the little warning that it has coming up there and it'll come back in just a few seconds with the results. There it is. This is the training evaluation history. So you can see the RMSE starts at 47, gets down to around 41. And to give you an idea of processing time, I didn't fast forward any of that. And I'm not doing a formal benchmark, but the the data or the article that is on the Rapids Medium site does show you the performance and this pretty much aligns with with what I saw. So under definitely under a minute end to end on this, whereas 733 seconds on a CPU. I haven't tried it on a CPU yet. Now, if you want to do some of this other things like um, inference and saving the model, that sort of thing, that is all on the article that I gave you a link to. The article here on Medium does not talk about installation, so I added that as well on, on mine that I also have the link to in GitHub. So do you find Rapids interesting? If you'd like other videos on this, let me know. You can also do some demonstrations of how to do this in the cloud if you don't have a local Linux box available to run it locally. Thank you for watching my video. And if you're interested in NVIDIA Rapids, definitely let me know in the comments. Uh, let me know with a like and consider subscribing to my channel. I cover all things artificial intelligence, neural networks, and any fun project that I happen to undertake.